Yes, the Commonwealth Games have contained some remarkable stories. Megan mentioned some of them. Sophie Pascoe, Hamish Bond. Uh, there was Joe Edwards, of course, Tom Walsh, Joel King, uh, Eddie Dawkins winning gold, silver and bronze. But the story of David Litty, we think, is hard to beat. At 21, he won gold by lifting 200, sorry, 403 kilos. 174 in the snatch, 229 kilos in the clean and jerk, which is the weight of Kieran Reed, uh, Jerome Kano and 18 blocks of butter combined. It's an all-time Commonwealth record and he's only just begun doing international competitions at a senior level. I spoke to him a short time ago and unsurprisingly he was still feeling pretty stoked. Uh, pretty proud. Um, I never really thought I could uh, pull it off myself and uh, it's unreal and I can't really explain how to feel. And um, even, even today when I woke up I was like, man, am I dreaming or is this for real? It is for real. It's real gold that you are wearing. Oh, can you talk about the lift? Tell us about the lift. From our friends at TVNZ, we have the footage, the 229. And at, at what stage did you know you had this? Uh, as soon as I got it off the ground and I racked it and I stood up, I had a good hand grip, so I knew I had it. The only thing was uh, I doubted my legs and the power that would come through from the bottom. and. Um, as soon as I locked out and stood up, uh, I was so happy and uh, I, I can't actually believe that I actually got it. And at the moment, I was just so proud and happy um, to be able to represent New Zealand and the family and uh, yeah. You held the New Zealand on your shirt. You held it for a long time, didn't you? You held it out to the crowd. That, that, that was a moment of great pride and the crowd was making a huge amount of noise. I wanted them to know that uh, New Zealand was in the house. <laughs> and that uh, there were not a little, there were not a little island in Australia, a little island out of Australia that will take over soon somehow. New Zealand is in the house, and Tonga to a certain extent too, because you spent a lot of your childhood in Tonga, didn't you? Yeah, um, I was New Zealand born, uh, Tongan raised, and I came back to New Zealand when I was uh, ten years old, and I've been there since. So yeah. Uh, and, and there you were at One Tree Hill College, year 10, I think. Classic Kiwi kid, not really sure what you wanted to do. And someone said to the woman who became your coach and mentor, Tina, uh, this kid's got what it takes as a lifter. Is that what happened? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, as, a, as a kid, um, interested to do whatever. Uh, just followed some of the, my friends to weightlifting. Started doing it, uh, <laughs> didn't really like it, it wasn't as fun as rugby, so I went back to rugby and um, I had a talk with my coach one, one day and she, she just basically said, do you want to be just another number in the field or a world class lifter? And that kind of hit me hard and um, that's, that's the, I guess the point, um, I decided that I want to be a world class lifter. And you are one. You're number one in the Commonwealth. You have a Commonwealth record. Uh, you already have a world ranking, but you know, and I think everyone knows, that this is kind of the beginning of something even more extraordinary for you, right? What are you thinking about the Olympics in 2020? Uh, there's a lot more to come, and um, 2020 Japan will be fun. Uh, the goal is to uh, at least medal, but uh, if I can do my best and have fun with that competition too, um, I'll be glad of whatever I come out with. And you haven't had much money. You had to have a give a little to get you to the world champs, right? So now that you've won gold, you're starting, you'll get some financial backing, which will make a hell of a difference, won't it? Yeah, um, the whole weightlifting side of financial and stuff is uh, not that great. <laughs> but uh, every trip has been, the 90% of the trips has been uh, self-funded and I'm um, thankful for my coach for supporting me and backing me and um, doing everything for me to be able to get me out there and um, do what I do what I'm good at so this and you are good at it and that's the point isn't it so this is absolutely going to change your life won't it yes yeah, it already has so uh, that's the good thing about it I feel blessed and I'm grateful for everything can you tell me how it has already? What feels different today from, say, two or three days ago? Uh, it's, everything's different right now. Um, 
Uh, I'm not used to being in a camera every five seconds <laughs> and um, getting messages from everybody. It's just overwhelming and it's unreal. And um, I'm just trying to keep out of social media so I can focus on my day and live it out instead of spending it on my phone and stuff like that. Well, it's been our privilege to talk to you, David. Congratulations, and you are a very young man with very limited experience in, in international competition, so it really does seem like this is the beginning of a remarkable ride for you, and we really wish you well, and congratulations. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you for the love and support. Uh, thank you, New Zealand. And I can't believe I'm actually talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, bro. Me too. David Liffey joining us a short time ago.